set the weedy pan, you need a modified thin set. That's really the only specification, so anything you get at the box stores or whatever is fine, but just as long as it's modified. So we're gonna be using Ultra Flex 2, made by Mapei. Decent stuff. I like using this for the floor, setting membranes, stuff like that. It's not very expensive. Um, you don't really need anything super expensive for this either. But just mix this up for a tile installation. So there are usually um, a membrane ratio, which would be the wettest ratio, and then just like a tile setting ratio on the back of the bag. So on this one, uh, it looks like five to six quarts. So we'll probably go like five and a half quarts, five quarts per um, bag. So I'm doing a half bag. So um, really just setting the pan. So, you know, if you're gonna be doing the subliner and any type of banding, you wanna have it the wettest. So do six quarts on this particular product, six quarts of water will get you the wettest ratio. Um, but we're gonna go right in the middle because I want it to be a little bit thicker and it's just for setting this pan. We gotta get this cut to fit our opening here. So we're fine on this width because we got like 36 and, a quarter and an eighth. And then our, again, our drain was centered at 18 inches, so we're good there. But we need to cut it down a little bit. Boy, that's really pretty close. So 40, yeah, so we got 24 on the right side here. So the one side, we're just gonna be cutting a little bit off of the left side. Yeah, basically, basically a half inch. So we're only gonna be cutting a half inch off of this, which is primarily basically the, the, the dado joint. Um, so we're gonna have to recreate the dado and that's simple enough. So let's first just, let's just cut the dado off or the rabbit joint, I should say, and then dry fit it. And then we'll recreate the rabbit joint. Yep, that'll fit pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, we'll just recreate that rabbit joint on this side. So we just want a half inch. Recommend is just to set your blade and come down the same distance as this. So it's basically just recreating that rabbit joint. So as you can see here, it's not perfect with the utility knife. I mean, honestly, a, a table saw would get you a little bit closer, but that's all you want to do is just recreate that because you're going to fill this whole area with sealant. And then let's go ahead and put our drain on because you need to let this sit for about 15 minutes before setting the actual drain. So within your kit, you just have a, a fitting. So you just have a paper ring and a rubber gasket and then the locking nut. So you wanna make sure that you're buying the, the weedy sealant that comes with the system. You wanna be using anything else other than what their product is. Okay, so then all you have to do is get a really nice generous bead around this drain assembly. So be generous with it.
And you just stick this right in here. Make sure that you see that oozing out on all sides. Okay. And then your rubber gasket goes first. Paper gasket. And it just gets hand tightened. You don't need to do anything. No wrench or anything. Okay, and then just take the sealant and just smear that around the edge to get it. Okay, and then you have to take this out so that you can fit it over your drain. So this has the rubber gasket and a locking nut for this as well. So we'll set that aside. Okay, so I would go ahead and cut this pipe flush. You actually have to be five eighths below the um, five eighths inch below the subfloor. So we're gonna cut it off flush so we can be able to evaluate where five eighths is. So that's flush. So let's just go ahead and test our dry fit this again real quick. We'll be able to get that in there then. Okay. To cut this five eighths below, you're gonna have to measure it. And just kind of keep it at that that mark. So essentially just using the inside pipe cutter and just letting it go down to that mark. Okay, so we're live again, day four on this bathroom remodel. I'm gonna uh, install this weedy shower pan. And if you remember from my last couple of videos is basically we're creating a curbless shower to provide more room in this smaller bathroom. So what's great about this, this is called the weedy Ligno pan. Ligno, I have no idea where they come up with these names, but it's basically just a curbless shower system. It's three quarters of an inch thick. And if you take the subfloor out, and recess it to the top of the joist, you'll get that three quarter inch drop down. So that's how you create a curbless shower into uh, the easiest way. I mean, this is really one of the easiest or fastest ways to do it. Um, and you can modify it. And that's, I'd say that's only one thing about the Weedy system. The drain locations aren't as um, flexible as maybe some other systems. Like you have to be pretty, pretty accurate with what you're doing here. So um, a couple other things before I get started is that your drain location, you need a six and a half inch hole cut around your drain. And then that drain um, riser pipe has to be five eighths below the uh, plywood layer. So I use an inside pipe cutter. This is allows me to get it down below. <clears throat> it's much easier to honestly cut it with an inside pipe cutter than it is to try to measure the right um, right riser pipe going in um, beforehand. And a lot of times you don't have access below anyway, so you're, you're always working above. So first thing is, is, oh, that's the other thing. This is a modified thin set. It doesn't really matter what kind of modified thin set, just make sure that it's modified. And then we'll go ahead and install this pan. So first thing, like any tile installation, you always wanna dampen the surface with a damp sponge. This is gonna keep that thin set from wicking dry immediately from the, the plywood. So just wipe this down. And this also helps get all the dust off of it. Um, the one thing you have to pay attention to too is levelness. Um, these systems are not gonna really do well on level. Everything is created uh, quarter inch per foot on the slope. 
So you have to have a, a, a level subfloor, I mean, within reason. I mean, if you're an eighth inch within an eighth inch or something, you're fine. Um, but you just can't overcompensate too much because um, there's not a lot of flexibility with them. So you wanna use a quarter by quarter inch square notch trowel for this. And uh, again, modified thin set. So first thing is, is to burn the thin set into the substrate with the flat side of the trial. And this just allows an easier way to get um, the thin set uh, coverage basically. Because if you glide it over just raw plywood, it's hard to get nice ridges. But if you burn the thin set in, it'll make a nice surface for it. So we'll burn this in and then we'll actually go on the back of the pan first before we trial the floor. So a couple other things I did today, if you've been following along, is that we got the rest of the drywall up and uh, we've got our shower valve in and we got a, um, a diverter port for our shower head. And then we also have, um, yeah, this is gonna be for our hand shower. This is all made by Delta, very easy installation. You'll see these in future videos. Um, but as long as this valve just sits back two inches from the rough end framing, you're ready set for tile. So it's really easy to get the depth on these as well. So let's go ahead and back butter this first because what you have to do is back butter and back trowel this pan. So. ahead and set this in yeah we gotta get that insulation I should have done it the other way this is what you get for doing it live it's in place okay now my drain is a little a little stubborn it's, it's it's pretty close but it's not quite close so i'm going to use the back of my hammer to get this to move okay all right so then and you can just wiggle this around and get those ridges to collapse so you get a little bit of movement make sure everything's clear out of here. Um, so I would just take a spare piece of backer board because I'm not gonna have time to do the, the walls today because that was the other thing we did today. We got this niche in, so we had to reframe that. Um, so that took a little bit of time to get set up, but I would just take a spare piece of board or a section of it and just check your, so you can see how nice and easy this is to cut. That's the other thing I should mention. What's awesome about this is if you're working in here and you and you like drop a tool on it or whatever, as long as it doesn't go all the way through the board, this is 100% waterproof. So a lot of these other systems, you nick the surface, it's done. I mean, or you have to repair it. And sometimes, you know, if you've got more than one person working in the space, you don't even know if they did anything. So it's nice to have that insurance. The other thing I like about the board is that it's not, it's rigid, you know, so Curdy board and other foam boards are pretty, you know, they can bend around things almost. Um, this is pretty, pretty strong stuff. So I, I like that aspect of it. I uh, always have, again, it's just a pricey material, unfortunately. So, but just go in, make sure. I just want to make sure that you can fit this into the space. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And that's nice and tight. This drain might be moving, keeping me from moving this. Just try to 
there we go. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. So now that now that you have that rabbit joint, what we're gonna do when we go to waterproof this is fill that with sealant. And that board kind of goes halfway down into that pan. So it is important to make sure that you provide that space that's needed. So, and then since this is curbless, they provide you these little strips that you can seal into place. And as you can see, this is nice and level with my floor now. And then everything pitches quarter inch per foot. It's always good just to double check, make sure, you know, you paid attention to how everything's set. Um, but yeah, it makes a nice, nice, easy installation. So then the drain piece, it's uh, basically just a rubber gasket. Um, so always have the bevel side up and then it has this little locking nut on it. So this might be a little tough just because my drain is difficult here. And you can use a screwdriver to push that down if it's stubborn like this. You see this all right there? If anybody's on there and has any questions about it, just let me know. comes with this little tool. Wait, show it again and then touch it. Just this little piece that goes in. This helps tighten it. You put it in the grooves and just use a flat screwdriver to tighten it. Oh, jeez. That's why I have a magnet thing just fell down in there. <laughs> I'll have to get a magnet to get that out of there. Dang it. But anyways, um, after I get this up tomorrow, we're going to flood test it, um, and, well, not tomorrow, but Monday. Um, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, so, but uh, order operation my next day, basically I'm going to finish this waterproofing, and I'm going to put the outside floor tile down. I always recommend doing the outside floor first, so then you can build up your shower floor tile to meet that outside floor. Most of the time, your outside floor is going to be probably bigger tile. I mean, we're doing... Um, seven by 20 inch plank tile. So by the time I thin set that with a quarter by three eighths inch trial, um, you know, you'll be almost a half inch thick and then you'll be able to just make sure you build up that layer of tile to meet up with it. It'll meet up pretty close though. Um, but it's really important to waterproof the outside of a shower, especially in a smaller bathroom like this. So they have a product called uh, the Weedy Subliner and that's what you want to order with this kit so that you can do your floor as well. And, and you want to wrap it up against the walls as well. I'm sure I'll show you that on, on Monday as well. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at. So this comes, they come with these little strips and these are just meant to fill in, fill in these rabbit joints where you don't need them. So you just want to take the weedy sealant and just fill that entire groove. basically just embed this okay, so then that makes it all nice and flush and then what we'll do is uh, we'll be running the weedy subliner four inches over this joint but for today, we're just going to end it here because I don't have time to work on the rest. So, but, um, put a little bit of weight on this. I'm going to put some bags of thin sit on this um, if you're not going to be able to finish the walls. Because if you put the walls down immediately, that's not as important because you're, those walls are being pushed down in. You're keeping that pan down into place. But if you don't have the walls up, you're going to want to put a little bit of weight on this. All right.
Did you 